This time on the show, building an office network from the ground up the right way, breaking SIM card security with a Palm Centro, how not to bork your bits with Grub2 in a Barbie Rover? All that and more on this episode of Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoDaddy, Squarespace, and the national fight against drunk driving, over the limit, under arrest. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Hack 5. I'm Matt Lestock. I'm Shannon Morse. I'm Darren Kitchen. This is Season 6, Episode 1 in the brand new Hack 5 studio. Yes. Look at it, it's Hack beautiful! Five, the name of the show. It's so lovely, I love it. <laughs> uh, we spent uh, quite a bit of time working. Uh, Slaughtering goats, you know, draining their blood. Exactly. It is a sacrificial obviously. thing. You know, we ran out of goat blood. We had to slice, you know, a little bit and be like, squirt, squirt. Well, you know, because we're emo. Exactly. I'm just happy that we all put our own ideas and thoughts into it and we combined all of our brains into one. Are you kidding me? We just <laughs> said what worked over the last five seasons and then just said, well, you know, I really liked the bricks and I really liked the whatever that stuff is and how about we throw on some of that? I mean... You know, red and fire. Anyway, there's you well, had that whole thing about how it's every aspect. I, I, I posed the question to Twitter uh, and and asked them. I said, you know, what can you can you actually name all the different you know aspects of the set yeah. from seasons past? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there were only a couple of people that got it right out of the you know twenty or thirty that oh, were actually yeah. responded. Because you put that crappy iPhone picture up on there, right? Uh, I posted your photo. Uh, well, no. <laughs> Blackberry photo. photo. Three GS would have rocked it. Yeah. But anyway. So we've got a great episode. Uh, I am going to be <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> still working out the there. kinks. It's understandable. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, more okay. of what we've actually got going on in a day-to-day -day aspect of information technology, systems admin, network admin kind of thing. Uh, I showed you ESXi last time, uh, the last series. And today, uh, we're going to start a series kicking off network infrastructure, uh, how to actually construct and build, plan, and deploy a network infrastructure based on your needs. Uh, so that's what I'm doing today. You just get a 10 base T hub and plug everything into it, right? Do they make hubs anymore? <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Shannon, you've got a ridiculous hack that I'm... Yeah, apparently you can bypass the sim, sim lock security on a Centro. Exciting. Yeah. We will have to try like, this out. I, I was like, whoa, okay, I need a new phone. I mean, a lot of people lock their SIMs because a lot of people keep, uh, especially people who have iPhones, stuff on their SIM so that when they need to transfer to another device or, you know, stuff oh, like yeah. that, everything goes on the SIM. I'm in CDMA land, so I have no idea. You have no idea what a SIM is. Oh, is oh, that, oh, that, oh, is that Is that with two M's? Is that like a <laughs> DIM? <laughs> Do they make that an EDO? <laughs> anyway. God, EDO. Yeah. All right, so we went there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have more on that later. I cool, promise. Cool. All right. Well, let's uh, kick it off right, but first let's find out the details about this month's LAN party. That's right. This month's LAN party is Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. We'll be playing at game.hack5.org on Saturday, September 5th. And you can sign up and vote for all of your favorite games over at hack5lan.squarespace.com. And I would like to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can build beautiful looking blogs or websites in a fraction of the time it would take with a traditional content management system. Their intuitive drag and drop interface is as snappy and powerful as a desktop publishing app. But best of all, there's no software to install, no databases to configure, no patches to apply, and no code to fiddle with. Find out for yourself how simple and powerful it can be with a two week free trial at squarespace.com. And use promo code HACK5 to support the show and save 10% off the life of your service at squarespace.com. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so here we are back in the set again. Uh, we're going to show you exactly what it takes to actually deploy and support uh, and build the infrastructure that will go behind your ESXi or ESX or vSphere uh, deployments that we actually highlighted weeks prior. Uh, I'm currently in a sticky situation where right now I've got a bottleneck on my network and I have no idea where it's at. Uh, from one end to another I get about 14 megabytes a second throughput on a pure gigabit network. Between the front and the back end we've got about 
five different 24 port uh, gigabit ethernet switches. Don't know exactly what the problem is because I don't have sufficient management capabilities to actually trace back where that problem is actually coming from. So the master plan here is to not only fix that problem, but future-proof ourselves uh, later on down the line. Now when I say future-proof, most of you walk into a place, whether it be a network closet or a data center, with stuff already pre-configured and already in production. Uh, the problem there is you have your own way of doing things. Probably the way that things have been done are not to best practices. So what we want to do is we want to live migrate our existing hodgepodge solution to a best practices or as best as we can possibly get practices solution. So what I've actually chosen to do is we're going to actually repatch all of our connections. We're going to replace all the switches. We're going to stack the switches. And we're also going to VLAN and make sure we have QoS enabled on all of our solutions that we possibly can. That includes VOIP. That includes if you have some other uh, you know, port that you guys are using proprietary uh, to actually transmit data. We want to make sure that that gets priority. So the whole series is based on start to finish where we're actually going with our network. So let me give you a basic rundown. Uh, we've got a couple components here. I may, I may mention in the ESXi series that I've got a SAN solution, uh, which is 10 gig Ethernet, which utilizes a CX4 adapter for copper 10 gig E. Uh, the Dell PowerConnect 6248 that I actually purchased allows you to connect up two CX4 10 gig Ethernet uplink modules into each switch. Now, in each switch, we can daisy chain 12 of them for 576 front end ports uh, to make one big switch. Beyond that, we can actually connect 10 gig Ethernet uplinks into the system so that we can actually connect servers, SANs, whatever we want to utilize the CX4 adapter. In addition, we've got 48 gigabit stacking modules on the back of the unit so that we can have high-speed communication between each switch. We've also got Leviton Extreme 6 Plus, uh, which are CAT6 uh, certified connectors, which make it pretty easy to you know, mix and match or you know, swap in and out. The biggest problem with standard patch panels are your tone generator and your tone wand. With the Leviton series, because of the keystone jacks that we've actually got to utilize, we can say, OK, port 1 on this patch panel corroborates to port 1 on the other patch panel in our server rack. And that's the other thing that I want to let you guys know about. The way that I'm going to implement my architecture is I'm going to have a bunch of patch panels in a networking closet. And for each server rack we've got, we're going to put another patch panel. Uh, it makes a things a whole lot more modular in the event that you ever need to move, that you ever need to reconstruct, or actually trace back and make changes to your existing patch interface. So that's kind of a high level overview of exactly what we're going to do uh, to try and bring my network up to date. And a lot of the same principles will apply to your network as well. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up at manathack5.org or you can hit me up at forums.hack5.org. Coming up, Shannon's got SIM pin bypassing via the Palm Centro. And Darren's going to keep us up to date with everything that is community related. This week, we want to highlight some of the grand geekery found across the vast Hack 5 community. Now, this bit of brilliance comes from the Hack 5 forums from none other than Aloysius89. Now, him and two of his buddies built this sweet little internet-enabled rover based on none other than a Barbie Power Wheels. Remember this from the 90s? Dude, I totally wanted one. A G.I. Joe, not the Barbie one. Anyway, point being, he has this beautiful website put together that documents the whole project. So the hardware, the electronics, the code, it's all there for you guys to enjoy. So I definitely encourage you to check it out. There's videos and everything linked up in our show notes. And of course, if you guys want to nominate a community project to be featured on the show, just go ahead and email us or just click contact at the top of hack5.org. And of course, we want to thank one of our excellent sponsors, the National Fight Against Drunk Driving. Listen, people, alcohol, drugs, and driving do not mix. And the message is pretty clear. Drinking and driving, over the limit, under arrest. Don't put yourself or others in danger. 
Police will be out in force from August 21st through Labor Day weekend cracking down on drunk drivers. Beyond just putting your life or mine at risk, you could cost yourself a bundle of time and money, loss of driver's license, higher insurance rates, and dozens of other expenses from attorney's fees, fines, costs of towing, repairs, loss of work, the list goes on and on. Drinking and driving is so easy to avoid. Go out, have fun, just plan ahead. Get a designated driver, call a taxi, take the bus, or rent a limo. They're actually pretty cheap when you split it up between half a dozen people. Crushed velvet and I need it for a smile. A new religion. <laughs> Sorry. So I have this friend online who came up to me and he was like, what kind of security do you use for your Palm Centro? And I was like, ah, oh, that's a good question. So I actually searched for Palm Security, Palm Centro <laughs> Security, and I found out that there is a bypass by using the system, the SIM pin lock, that you can bypass and find all of the hardware information on a Palm Centro. I didn't realize that Centros, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I haven't used a Palm in years, but I didn't realize the security was a big deal. They're like, yeah, actually, I had to use like a oh, security yeah. suite. So, I mean, there's like, you know, exploits and stuff for this phone? There is. It's really weird. Um, well, first of all, you know what a pin code is, or do you? Well, the yeah, yeah. Uh, I understand the pin is, you know, your typical four digit. Yeah. I mean, I, you know what? Honestly, the only time I've ever used it is on a candy bar phone when I used to pop it in my pocket and accidentally butt dial people. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Who hasn't? I, but I, I've never used it to secure my phone because I've always imagined if somebody really wanted to, they'd just take my Blackberry and then pull the uh, SD card out of the back of it and then that'd be game over. Well, these little SIM card guys, see, ta-da. Woohoo. They're itty bitty, but they store all sorts of information that is basically a unique identifier for yourself so that your network knows who you are. No matter what phone you're using, you can transfer it to every single phone if you're mm -hmm. on a GSM network. It stores your contacts, your SMS messages, your country code, and your mobile network code, all sorts of different codes, tons and tons of data. And one thing that it protects as well is this SIM pin password and your puck password in case you forget your SIM and you lock yourselves out, so you need your puck password, which is your kind of like a serial number. Okay, so so that pin phone. on the SIM is what locks my phone. Yes. Great. And you said there's a way around it on the central. There is. Would you like to see yeah, it? Yeah, I would love to see. So how do we go about this? <laughs> okay. For well, the, first like, of all, for the three Palm users in the audience, I had to set up my phone lock. So I went over into the phone lock menu and typed in my password and then I shut off my phone right and then when it power cycles it comes back on and I see this okay then the I just enter in a couple of numbers and yeah I get it says rejected. unlock sim I have to enter in my four digit password and then I can get back into the phone I can unlock it I can make calls do email I can get on the internet whatever I want right well well we don't know the password the because we just is, you know stole Paul's yeah. Palm Centro because he's now not a Mac user. He's a and I know that if I try it four times or three times, then it'll completely lock me out and oh, I'll great. say, you'll need your puck code. And y the only way can, you can get that is by like going to the store or going online. And that would require a little bit account. of social engineering. Yeah. Or, and, and there's basically no sense in brute forcing it. But okay, so, so I don't want to hit, hit OK and cancel does nothing. So emergency call is the one that you want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. So I hit emergency call, hit star two the phone key, and I want to hang up that emergency call before it goes through. Yeah, we don't want to be dialing 911 here on Hack 5. Oops. And now I'm into the hardware. Oh, great. You're, you're, yeah. Yeah, you've, you've <laughs> got your calendar right there. You see that we've got Bush Gardens tomorrow. Like, I have my calendar. I can see the email that I've already downloaded onto my phone, all my SMS right, messages. Right, because you pop your mail from Gmail. I have all of my contacts on here. Everything, there's even pictures on here that you can access just by doing the emergency call thing. You can access a person's life. I could access all of my notes in here. Like if somebody stored their passwords inside of their notes or their, uh, yeah. no, that's a very bad <laughs> idea, or yeah. any kind of information in there, it would completely ruin your life if somebody was able to do that. Dude, that would suck. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to like <laughs> wrap my head around 
Uh, it's it's a little scary, isn't it? Right. <laughs> no, but this is just for the Centro, though, right? And it as far as I know, and this doesn't give us access to. There's probably other phones like it, but now, haven't found from what I understand, you know, you're saying that there's a lot of information stored in the SIM, but uh, the way I hear it is that the the SIM actually, like, as far as contacts are concerned, only actually carries like um, the the name and the phone number. Mm -hmm. So yes. you know, for most smartphones, you've got you know you know mobile, home, work. Yes, you've got, exactly. So they're uh, all stored on your photos hardware. and everything. So this just gets you access to the hardware. Mm -hmm. That's still really cool. Now the thing is, there are ways to keep yourself from having this problem. Okay. You can download certain types of um, extra security for your Palm Centro. There's one that I checked out on a whole bunch of different forums. It does cost 12 bucks. Eh, not too cool for an application. It's called Warden Security for the Palm Centro. And apparently everybody says that it's a really good one. Meh. I'm not going to spend right. 12 bucks though because I keep my phone on me at all times. So I'm not too worried. Except for when you lose electronics and cab rides Shh. and Toronto, it happens. That was just my camera. Okay. No worries. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I'm, I'm so, I think we should do a lot more SIM hacking, if you I will. I agree. So let's go ahead and uh, import some fun hardware from China and see what kind of fun stuff we can do. So if you guys have some ideas on maybe some SIM unlocking, some phone bypasses, definitely hit me up. My email is snubs at hack5.org, or you can catch me on the forums. I'm always there. All right, and coming up in just a bit, I'm going to be talking to you guys about Grub2, and we're going to wrap this bad boy up. But first, let's head over to Matt and see what's going on with trivia. So our last contest was using the clues in episode 525, what is the address of the hack beach house? Our winner last time was Beekman, who not only provides the address, but also photos of the beach house with interior and a full floor plan. Beekman goes on to quote River Phoenix from Sneakers, it's fascinating what 50 bucks will get you at the county recorder's office. Touche Beekman, touche. This week's contest is one for the Photoshop and After Effects crowd. Get creative with the assets at hack5.org slash LCD wall and come up with your own graphic loop for our new LCD wall. The winner will receive Prono Bozo's CD0 equals one equals everything with, along with an awesome Hack 5 swag bag. Not only that, but the winner will <laughs> will also use the winning graphics in an upcoming episode of Hack 5. Head on over to hack5.org slash lcdwall and make sure your entries are submitted by September 3rd. Also want to thank GoDaddy for sponsoring this week's episode of Hack 5. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all of our GoDaddy codes and offers. All right, guys, so that just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5. But before we let you go, I wanted to ask Darren. Mm -hmm. uh, you recently had uh, some fun and... Uh, Is that what we're calling it now? Yeah. As always. It's, it's totally going to be worth it as soon as I iron out all the kinks. Um, it, I'm working on a segment next week for Grub 2, which is like the coolest... Re it's, it's a rewrite of Grub. I mean, we all know Grub because it's the tasty goodness that brought us to the USB Muppet Pass. Yep. And I thought, um, th there's this, I've been doing a lot of reading about that stuff. In fact, we have totally got to take the, uh, that entire episode thread and move it to its own form because yeah. there have been like, what, 17,000 oh, yeah. views or something on yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it's blowing up pretty good. I, so It deserves more than just a thread, so let's go ahead and make a, a board specifically for that. Anyway, uh, so it's, uh, as far as, you know, aside from Ministry of it there, um, I've been looking into Grub2 because it's really cool because it was written from scratch. It's cleaned up, it's modular, it's portable, and best of all, it has this really sweet new option called Loop Back, which basically lets us take a file and mount it as a file system. So what that means is, instead of extracting an ISO and copying a boot folder and some SquashFS and some other fun happy goodness, and hoping everything works and you know praying to the Ether Lords, we can actually boot off of an ISO file. Cool. <laughs> Dude. I got like ISOs coming out my floppy drive, whatever, you yeah. know what I'm saying, like, you know. <laughs> so just like throw this all on your uh, USB drive, format it up, bada bing, bada boom. So it's not hard coded, you can actually select which one you actually want to boot off of. Right. And okay, gotcha. Yeah, and that's cooler. Who doesn't have an ISO collection, you know? Way better than Juliet. I forget. Oh. 
Anyway. Joliet. <laughs> Is that how it's pronounced? I think it was. Oh, Joliet. Yeah. Anyway, so I've been, um, you guys know that I'm an Ubuntu guy, you know, and um, and I did the procedure. It's it's as simple as apt-get install grub2. It really is. Except I do want to mention that, okay, so when you go through and actually do it, you'll see you get this beautiful little message here, and it's like, don't freak out. It's going to be okay. We're changing your grub up. Before we do this, we're going to actually um, test the stuff before we do it. And what, what it actually does is puts Grub2 behind Grub1, and we do what's known chain loading. So we actually chain load Grub2 from Grub1, and if it works, we say, let's go ahead and finalize it, run this command, upgrade TAC from TAC Grub TAC Legacy. Time out. TAC is the military definition or uh, phrase for hyphen. Or dash. You know, or I actually dash. heard that come up recently. Did you yeah. really? Yeah. We get <laughs> yeah. emails about There's that? There's a bunch of people that wanted to know where the hell did <laughs> TAC DCF come from? DCF is TAC. You Military it came from explanation. It came from Mubix. Or pronunciation of <laughs> He's sitting the term right there. Like a cross cut to that guy. Are we right? Yeah. Mubix is not. He's nodding. shaking his head. All he's, right. He's there we giving go. us the, um, the international right. sign. It does that sometimes. Continue. So, <laughs> point being. You, you, you just pray the other lords, and I got to the point where it's like, moment of truth, you know, let's go ahead and try that chain loading. And I got that beautiful, like, file not found, error 15. Nothing deal. works. No. And I'm like sitting there like, oh, no, all of my pineapple code was on that. This is bad. And uh, it, it turns out that it was good that I actually made this mistake because I learned, I got very intimate with Grub. Yeah. We had moments there, <laughs> and we really connected. I feel like there's, there's something to be had. Um, but there's there's command lines that, that you can actually yeah well there's <laughs> there's command lines that you can do that what have they changed instead of starting with zero they start with one on a partition and then and then they forgot to put slash boot in the thing and then I'm an idiot that actually used Wooby because I'm lame and and boring and just installed it that way so I'm I'm gonna redo my entire laptop now but I got everything working now it's pretty easy to just edit the entries so that's what I'm working on so if you're you know grub fiend hit me up because. We are having some fun next week. So you're going to show us a bunch of the, the reasons well, why, you would, why, why you would actually use Grub2 over Grub1, mm -hmm. benefits of so on and so forth, and, and some of the caveats as well. Yeah, pretty er, -er. I like Lilo. <laughs> Paul likes Lilo, but he can, he can go to his hap happy EFI Apple land and, and just crawl into a bus. I think he just doesn't know how to pronounce Lilo. Aww. <laughs> Lilo Dallas. No, no, no. Lilo Dallas. Lilo Dallas. <laughs> I love like Anaconda. No, Anaconda is. Nah, I'm kidding. Anyway. Yeah, whatever. Shannon. More of these. Yes. <laughs> so we have a group, and I know all of y'all out there haven't joined it yet, so you need to join it because I came up with the sweetest name for this group. It's called Facebook.com slash Technolust. So if you don't join, I'm going to track you down. She's I'm just kidding. She Wait, moved what to was it? What I'm was sorry, it? I'm sorry. She moved to Virginia 12, no, 14 months ago, and congrats. On the y'all. Oh, honey, I was saying y'all way before I moved over here. Oh, that's right, Missouri, that's right? right. Yeah. Missouri land. Y'all. North Carolina. Crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> y'all. So, uh, I do want to mention something real quick before you get to that. Uh, mad props to Blake Stevenson. Uh, if you've been going ooing and aahing over the sweet new graphics on the Hack Five website, on the uh, motion graphics that I'm going to slave over here shortly, so those you have vectors finished them. have finished. Of course, <laughs> if this is airing, um, <laughs> that means that uh, that that I was actually able to take those beautiful vectors that he put together, those awesome cartoon figures of us, and uh, <laughs> turn it into something something half decent. So, you know, rock on. So Question. thank you to him. USB switchblade shirt. Is it coming? Did we get a question about that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I'll make A couple. Happen. Yeah. There you go. All right. As, as well as restocking the other stuff. Anyway, pfft, Whatever. Yeah, store. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing we want to let you guys know about is we're going to be doing Hack 5, uh, or actually what we call the Hack 5 Labs. So we're going to take ideas, uh, segment improvements, things like that. And we're actually going to take your suggestions, your ideas, and your comments and form that into our show. Uh, and give you mad props where due. So if you have any questions or comments, hit us up, feedback at hack5.org or labs at hack5.org. Right. Check 
the website yeah. for information on when the live labs are going to go on. We'll all be here. This is this is the thing that we're using that special cool technology where we can all sign into a special thing, get our hands dirty with some remote sessions. Yes, it really is like a hands-on environment yes. thing. Yes. Okay, cool. Because cool. You know, I think it's great I'm to bring excited. new people into the show using this technology as well as off show off camera, you know, during like Hack 5 Live style with the Hack House, yeah. getting their hands dirty, just playing with technology with kids. So you guys are all yeah. invited. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to create a forum and create the email address. So uh, head on over to forums.hack5.org and it's like labs at hack5.org. <laughs> yes. <It> but <laughs> like four people are like, wow. <laughs> Four people. Yes, Thank fam. You, I'm yeah, looking fam. at you, buddy. Is it fam? Fam. Fam does a lot. <laughs> no, that's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> we love you guys. All right. Uh, that just about wraps up this season one. Uh, season six, episode one, episode of Hack 5. <laughs> My name is wow. Darren Kitchen. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Matt Lestock, and we're reminding you to trust your techno lust. But you always forget. Yes, we have to always remind forget. you every time. <laughs> it's like Sunday morning. You know, you turn on like public Sunday access, morning, and it's like there's up. always like the dude and his mind. Jesus, yo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome this week. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I'm over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like watermelon. This is saying dirty things to me. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's do the show. Okay. <laughs> all sorts of covered. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, drop the squeegee. You sure? Yes, drop him. <laughs> no! no! All right. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> well, Paul's laughing. It must have been good. <laughs> <laughs>